I think there are structural reasons for violence against pundits. <clears throat> what are meant, what is meant by structural reasons? <clears throat> I take it like this. Uh, in a cricket stadium, India, Pakistan playing. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> is an Indian crowd. Is an Indian crowd. and uh, <coughs> a Muslim here uh, is happy whenever Pakistan plays well and shouts down whenever India plays well. So how will Hindus feel against this Muslim, definitely they will not keep quiet. <clears throat> Why is it like that? Because Pakistan is seen as India's enemy and here Hindu-Muslim underlying tension is there and Muslim is supporting Pakistan. So Hindus are likely to say, if you feel one with them, why not go to Pakistan and why are you here? <clears throat> so a Muslim supporting Pakistan will be seen by Hindus as enemy's friend. So enemy's friend as enemy. Now let us apply this to the situation of Kashmiri Pandits. This is a Kashmir and 5% are Hindus. We should remember it is only 5% during 80s that is before the violence. 95% are Muslims. And there is a government here. This government is seen being controlled by India, which is seen as Hindu. Though this government is Muslim, it is seen as being controlled. The governments here have rarely been popular. And then you have an army seen as a Hindu army. And many violations, human rights violations. Many Muslims killed. So, uh, the Hindus here, unless they do something about their relationship with 95% of the population will be seen as enemy's friends. So because the situation is Hindu, Muslim and being controlled by a Hindu. It's like this, the conflict here. So Hindu will be seen as enemy's friend. So there will be hostility between Hindus and Muslims in Kashmir as a reflection of hostility between Hindus and Muslims in India, that is number one, and plus central government domination over the 
state government is one so there are structural reasons for animosity uh, against kashmiri pandits which are not easy to overcome <clears throat> so what should be done in in that context i think these 5% of hindus should feel should see how they are related to majority of kashmiris that is muslims what is their relationship if 95% want autonomy and these 5% don't want and they want to be part of india this itself is a fundamental disagreement so if kashmiri pandits don't see as kashmiris but as hindus then muslims will see them as hindus only on the other hand kashmiri pandits see as kashmiris first and hindu next okay like you want indian muslim to be indian first and muslim next so if kashmiri hindus are kashmiris first and hindus next then kashmiri hindus should try to work out what is our common fate what kind of political arrangements we should have on what issues we have common interests common concerns for example if innocent muslims are killed did kashmiri pandits do kashmiri pandits make a cause with them do they raise the issue of human rights violations or they think these muslims deserve this or all separatists deserve this so what is the common interest common concern common agenda if you are a hindu obviously they will insist they are muslims if you is he insists that you are kashmiri then kashmiri hindus and kashmiri muslims should find out what are their common interests and 95% want greater political freedom and autonomy 5% should accept if they have to be accepted as kashmiris they may be kashmiris but remember kashmir doesn't belong to pandits only so 5% of the population should find common ground with 95% of the population